In this video, we are going to solve a problem on crystal field theory. We are going to see how ligand strength like a strong field ligand or a weak field ligand can affect electron pairing, orbital splitting and ultimately the magnetic properties of a complex. So before we look at the question, let's take a short recap of crystal field theory. Okay. Now crystal field theory helps explain the behavior of transition metal complexes by focusing on the interaction between the d orbitals of the metal ion and the fields produced by the surrounding ligands. According to CFT or crystal field theory, a metal ion or an isolated metal atom or an ion has degenerate d orbitals. That means all the five d orbitals have the same energy. So here what you can see is the degenerate d orbitals in a free metal ion that is not influenced by any sort of electrostatic interaction. And this degeneracy is maintained if a spherically symmetrical field of negative charge surrounds the central metal ion. In that case, the energy of the d orbitals increases. However, they are still able to maintain their degeneracy. The d orbitals are still degenerate here. Now we get an entirely different picture when we have an octahedral field with six ligands around the central metal ion. So here, when the negative field is due to the ligands, either anions or polar molecules like ammonia or water, so this spherical field becomes asymmetrical. And as a result, the degeneracy of the d orbitals is lost. So what happens here? When we say the degeneracy is lost, it basically means that the d orbitals split into two different energy levels. The lower T2G energy set with three orbitals, dxy, dyz and dxz, and the higher energy set with two orbitals, dx square minus y square and dz square. Now this energy difference between these two sets of orbitals is called the crystal field splitting energy and it is represented by delta naught. Now the extent of the splitting depends entirely on the nature of the ligand. Now ligands such as Cl minus or Br minus exert a smaller electric field on the metal ion and as a result delta naught here is small. On the other hand, ligands like Cn minus or CO exert a much stronger electric field on the metal ion and as a result the delta naught in these cases would be large. Those ligands that cause a smaller crystal field splitting are called weak field ligands and those ligands that cause a larger crystal field splitting are the strong field ligands. Now this nature of the ligands, whether they are weak field ligands or strong field ligands can have a significant impact in the behavior of a transition metal complex. It can determine if a metal complex would be a high spin complex or a low spin complex or whether it would be diamagnetic or paramagnetic. So as I said, this was supposed to be a small recap, although I think we have taken substantial time on the recap. So moving forward, based on this small recap of a crystal field theory, let's now solve a question. So the question is, using crystal field theory, predict if FeCN64- is a high spin or a low spin complex and whether it is paramagnetic or diamagnetic. Alright, so how do we solve this question? Well, the first thing that we need to do is to figure out the d-electronic configuration, right? For that, we have to calculate the oxidation state of iron. So, let the oxidation state of iron be x. And it is coordinated to 6 cyanide ions which have a charge of minus 1. And the overall charge of the complex is minus 4. So, we get the oxidation state of iron here as plus 2. Now, the electronic configuration of a neutral iron atom is 3d6-4s2. Fe2 plus will have lost two electrons from its valence shell 4s orbitals. So that means the electronic configuration here is argon 3d6. So the d electronic configuration here is 3d6. You can see that the six electrons are filled in the d orbitals here and the d orbitals are degenerate. And this degeneracy is lost in the presence of ligands. As a result, the degenerate d orbitals now split into higher energy eg orbitals and lower energy t2g orbitals. Now since we know cn minus is a very strong ligand, a super strong ligand, it would cause a much larger splitting in the d orbitals, right? So the delta naught is large here. So how does electron filling take place here? Let's fill in the t2g orbitals first, lower energy. So the first three electrons are filled. 
Now will the next electron pair with the d orbital here in the t2g orbital or will it go to the higher energy eg orbital? What do you think? We know that when delta naught is very large, it is energetically more favorable for electrons to pair up. Because in this case with strong ligands, delta naught is larger than the pairing energy. And because of this, the electrons will prefer to pair in the lower energy T2g orbitals. Because electrons don't have sufficient energy to cross this huge energy barrier and go to the eg orbitals. As a result, we get a low spin configuration with no unpaired electron that means the complex given here is diamagnetic and the number of unpaired electrons is zero. So we pretty much answered this question. We have found that FeCn64- is a low spin complex and diamagnetic in nature, right? But let me ask you one more thing. What if we had a weak field ligand here instead of Cn-? What if we had, let's say, H2O? How do you think the nature of this complex would change if we had water as a ligand? Let's see. In this case again, iron has a plus 2 oxidation state, water is neutral, right? So here the oxidation state of iron is plus 2, which means we have a d6 electronic configuration. And in the presence of ligands, the degenerate d orbitals here would split into higher energy eg orbital and lower energy t2g orbitals. We are already familiar with this. But the important thing to remember here is that water is a weak ligand, right? That means it causes a much smaller splitting in the d orbitals here. So the eg and t2g levels are closer to each other than we saw in the case of FeCn64-. So how does electron filling take place here? Let's see. So here again we can fill up the first three electrons in the t2g orbital. Now where does the fourth electron go? Do you think it would pair up in the t2g orbital? Or will it go to the higher energy eg orbital? Well, turns out that because the energy gap between the T2g and Eg orbitals are small here, in the case of weak field ligands like water, in this case it is energetically more favorable for the electrons to occupy separate orbitals. Here the delta naught is actually less than the pairing energy. The energy required to pair the electrons is actually greater than the energy difference between these two levels. So that means the next electron, the fourth electron would rather go up and occupy the eg orbital instead of pairing in the t2g orbital. So the final configuration looks something like this where we have 4 electrons in the t2g orbital and 2 electrons in the higher energy eg orbital. And this results in a high spin complex which is paramagnetic due to the presence of unpaired electrons here. As you can see, here we have 4 unpaired electrons and that makes FeH2062 plus a paramagnetic complex. So to compare, this is what our final configuration looks like in FeH2062 plus and FeCn64 minus. Here we have a weak field ligand and as a result we get a high spin paramagnetic complex and here we have a strong field ligand and as a result we get a low spin diamagnetic complex.